Hi everyone, Hannah Pennybaker with Northwest Fishing Reports here. Uh, we are at Mineral Lake in Pierce County, Washington, just about 10 minutes or so south of Alder Lake. Mineral Lake is pretty well known for its trout fishing. They plant about 100,000 rainbow trout fry in here every year. Now what's so special about that is most lakes in the state, the Washington Department of Fishing Game does stock catchable sized trout, which are about, about 9, 10 inches. So they plant them, you can catch them right away, but they've been eating hatchery pellets their whole life. Whereas if they stock them when they're little fry, they actually grow up eating more of a natural diet. And uh, some fishermen think that that makes them taste better. They have a little bit more of a pink meat, a little bit of a more natural diet instead of that muddy taste that we might associate hatchery trout tasting like. So Mineral Lake is a pretty special lake. They also stock uh, brown trout in here, several thousand brown trout. They also stock some brood trout, some brood stock uh, rainbow trout in here. So your chances of catching a fish here are pretty good. We've never actually fished here before. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of scout it out. We're gonna start here from this boat launch. We're just gonna kind of troll our way around, find where the fish at. But since they stock about 100,000 fish in here every year, I don't think we'll have any problem getting on fish. What do you think, Sam? No way. All right. <laughs> So let's go ahead and uh, get after him. We're gonna go ahead and um, start trolling from the boat launch. Um, this lake isn't super deep. I believe it's about 35 feet at its deepest point. Not only on northwestfishingreports.com can you find um, reports about you know what people have been using on certain lakes, where they've been successful, what their hot spots are, but you can also look up um, maps of the lake, sort of how deep it is at certain points, look up um, where the contour lines are, just so you can get a sort of an idea and work up a plan for how you want to fish. So we're going to go ahead and um, since we know this lake is only about 35 feet deep at its deepest, we might bring out the side planers for you today. We might also try stacking our downriggers. Um, we're just going to kind of start trolling and see where the fish are stacked up at. So what uh, trolling speed are we starting at? We're going to be starting a little bit slow. If that doesn't get their attention, I think we'll go right on up to like 2, 2.1, 2.2, .2, more trout speed. Uh, that'll be the ticket. There's a ton of fish in here, marking spots all over the water column. We've been trotting for a while now. We got two downriggers, this one at 17 and this one at 10 feet. And uh, something to note, you just got wrapped on a piling back there in the middle of the lake. So if you come out here, be careful of those. All right, first fish, whoa. <laughs> he took a run on me. Sorry, folks. Uh, first fish of the day uh, here on Mineral Lake. Wow. This one doesn't like the boat. <laughs> Looks like a nice fish. Oh, took another run. These fish are just so fun on these light action poles, I tell you. All right, so we're going to get them in the net for you guys. I'm going to lift them up, bring them to my net man. All right, there is our first fish of the day, folks. Wow. This one was caught on a green Max wedding ring and a show you the oh show you the Dodger nice uh, green I believe that's an arrow flash Dodger chartreuse arrow flash Dodger to get them unhooked this one was about mm, 10 feet deep I want to say so we're seeing lots of fish jumping on the surface so we decided to troll a little bit closer to the surface you know like I said earlier you don't need to really troll deep for these guys you don't need to use downriggers sometimes they're they're closer to the surface than you would think. Wow, he wasn't going anywhere. He had both hooks in him. Very nice. Given that there's a, the recent heat wave, a lot of the lakes around here are pretty hot. So um, as responsible fishermen, we want to make sure that we either fish early in the morning or we, um, we keep all the fish we catch because with the lake being as warm as it is, these fish aren't going to survive catch and release. Jumping out of the water. Dang, you missed the jump. Let him do his thing. Whoa. Right. He's almost to the boat. Nice. Good set. He got hooked under the eye there. Fish on! <laughs> this one, whoa, this one feels pretty heavy. Fingers crossed again that it's that uh, that brown trout we've been searching for all day. 
kind of turning into our white whale a little bit, isn't it, Chris? Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, they're, they're out here. There are some big browns in here. We've seen pictures on and reports on this website of 15, 17 pound brown trout. They're out here. Hopefully we can figure out how to catch them. We're not complaining. At least we're catching fish, right? That's all right. Oh, he looks big. Here he comes. Oh, jumping at the boat. Try to keep him out of the prop. There he goes. Nice net job by Chris. And this one's a nice one. As soon as we switched to the cut plug, um, that was just the ticket. The wedding rings are doing pretty well too, but the cut plug seems to be uh, putting some nice big trout on board. This one's pretty, pretty quality fish. Um, some of the fish we've been pulling up today have had, you know, some sea lice, well, not sea lice, have had some lice on them, some uh, a little bit of parasites. They're not going to hurt you. Um, they're just on the fish's skin, but um, this one's nice and clean. Uh, looks like another another 12, 13 incher. So the search for the elusive brown trout continues here on Mineral Lake. One of our recent upgrades is being that we got the eye troll and it's a world of difference. We used to have to run back to change the speed or if the wind picked up, we just have to run back to the tiller and just adjust the throttle by hand and then we had to tape it in place because our throttle likes to move on its own when it's just got the vibrations of the engine. Now we can just turn over here and turn it at, at the, the throttles at the touch of a knob right here from the captain's seat. So whoever's driving has complete control over the boat and they don't have to tell somebody to grab the steering wheel and run back to the throttle in the back and hope that they adjusted it you know, the 0.2 miles per hour that you're trying to adjust when you're trolling. So it makes such a huge difference. Totally worth it. Definitely get one. So I've got it at 75 and now I'm just gonna kind of grab the tip of my pole here, grab the line, set it in the pole holder. And I'm gonna grab my downrigger clip here. We're gonna bury it maybe about 75% of the way in and then we're gonna drop it in. And this is important, we wanna um, unhook the bale right here, Set, open up the bale, and then we're gonna um, pull our downrigger right here. This downrigger's a little stubborn, gotta give it a little help. We need some oil. Um, we're gonna set it down to about 15 feet. We're gonna, just gonna let it out until we see 15 feet on the, on the line counter here. 14, 15. Great, we're at 15 feet, and now we're gonna reel down on it. So we get that nice bend in the pole right there. That's perfect. And then um, we're just gonna wait till we get a fish on. That pole is just gonna bounce like that when we got a fish on. Um, no need to really set the hook when, you've, um, when you're using downriggers. Most of the time the boat will, the momentum of the boat going forward will set the hook for you. So, um, you know, not too complicated. And again, don't feel the need that you have to have downriggers to come out here. There's plenty of people still fishing. Plenty of people um, using power bait out here. You don't need downriggers, but um, can certainly take the mystery out of it. That way you know exactly what depth you're fishing. Whoa. Could be our brown trout. Yeah, he's really putting up a fight. Putting up a fight, all right. There he is. There he is, Looks all like right. Looks like a trout. Okay. Ready? Yep. Oh, <laughs> it's like he doesn't want to go in the net or something. <laughs> cool. This lure here is a lure of my own creation. Um, in the past year or so, I've kind of gotten into making my own, making my own lures. Um, so this one's kind of a Frankenstein wedding ring and a nice, uh, nice blade there. Um, if you ever want to get into your own lures, Max, I know they sell their they sell their beads, they sell um, they sell wedding rings separately, so you can kind of get into making your own lures as well. It's kind of fun to make your own and see how well they work. So, yeah, that was go, pretty Mike. good work. Yeah, it was like the third one you've hooked so far. Yeah, third one on this one, so feels pretty good to catch a fish on a lure that you that you made. <laughs> Boy, he's a fighter. We've got him out. Still another 40 feet to go, but. We don't have to horse them in. We got plenty of time, lots of space. And this one hit on the one with the shuttlehawk and you can see the shuttlehawk came right back up to the surface. 
after it was pulled out. That's one of the great benefits of the shuttle hawk. So you don't have to worry about pulling up the other line. But he's coming up on the boat now. There we go. Fishing the boat. This one hit on the pink wiggle hoochie. Fishing's pretty hot here. This one was again, it was on the green, um, green wedding ring. Gonna let him take some drag here. We got the whole lake to ourselves. No reason to, no reason to force this guy in. And we know there's some pretty big fish in here. So we're just gonna let him take all the line, all the drag he wants. Nice big brown trout, nice big rainbow. Cutthroat, all sorts of nice fish in this lake. So we're just gonna bring, bring this guy in nice and easy. We're just gonna bring him in slow and I'm gonna hoist him up to the net. And let him swim a little bit, let him fight, let him tire himself out. And then I'm gonna, gonna lift him up to the net. He's gonna back up to the net here. And in the net he goes. Very nice net job by Chris. And wow, look at the size of this rainbow trout. This one is a fatty. Probably a good 15, six inches on this guy. Wow. Again, on that green wedding ring and worm. Beautiful fish. Look at the shoulders on him. In Washington State, any fish that you catch on uh, bait, it technically counts toward your limit. So even if I were to let this guy go, he would still count towards my limit because I caught him on a worm. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and keep him because again, um, you know, we just had the heat wave. The water temperature is a little high. Generally, any water temperature over about 68, 70 degrees, trout just don't survive catch and release well. So in order to be kind of an ethical um, sports fisherman, we're gonna go ahead and uh, fry this one up and take him home. Looks like we finally got our white whale. We got a brown trout. Wow. This is my first time ever seeing a brown trout in person. And I gotta say, he is just beautiful. Look at that. All those spots on him. I don't know if you guys can see him in the... Whoa, look at those, look at those teeth. Just beautiful. He's, you can tell he's a brown. I mean, obviously different from a rainbow. He's got that nice square tail, the coloration, the dark brown spots on him, the nice uh, teeth. Wow. So one of the nice things about Mineral Lake is that it is one of the shallower lakes around here. It's shallow, kind of on the smaller end. So you don't need real expensive equipment like downriggers or side planters to come out here. You can just either um, straight line troll or you can use lead core. You know, you have options. We even see a bunch of people out here just still fishing, you know, bobber worm, uh, power bait. There's a bunch of different ways to catch them out here. You know, there's a hundred thousand uh, fish out here at the very least. So um, you don't need to troll. You don't need to use downriggers. You can either just uh, still fish. You know, you got lead core, straight line. Uh, you got a you got a whole bunch of options ahead of you. So definitely don't don't be afraid to come out here and uh, give it a try. Well, that was a great day out here on Mineral Lake. Yeah, definitely. Um, we actually ended up uh, limiting out. Not too bad for our first time out here. Uh, so the Washington State trout limit is uh, five fish, even though we caught rainbows and uh, one brown trout, still five fish limit. So we got 14 rainbows and one nice brown trout. That was a good surprise, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. I cannot wait to get that thing in the frying pan. <laughs> yep. It's happening as soon as we get home. <laughs> yep, so we would love to see you guys out here at Mineral Lake. Um, you know, they stock 100,000 trout fry out here every year. They stock uh, some brood stock rainbows. They stock brown trout. And I believe there's even some uh, cutthroat in here. So just kind of a smorgasbord of uh, trout out here. If you like trout fishing, come on out. So um, Mineral Lake is located just south of the town of LB. You just got to go by Alder Lake. And then um, Mineral Lake is about 10 minutes away. So not hard to find. And the boat launch is, well, boat launch is pretty nice. So um, we would love to see you guys out here. Come on out to Mineral Lake. This has been uh, Northwest Fishing Reports um, with Chris Decker and uh, Sam Guzman behind the camera. I'm Hannah Pennybaker, and we will see you on the next one. Thank you for joining us. So this is what I'm talking about right here. Really just quality trout out here in Mineral Lake.